So today's video is a review of the Doe Fit Spin Bike. This bike retails for $269 on Amazon. This bike is quite affordable, being 14% the price of the Peloton Spin Bike. If you've seen my previous videos, you may know that I'm a huge Peloton fan, but I think it's interesting to explore affordable indoor spin bike options, especially if you're not sure if you're gonna really love using it and you don't wanna break the bank. Today's video will be broken down into the following topic areas. Let's go over a few details on this bike. So this is what the bike looks like. The entire frame is welded steel aside from this plastic portion. This bike has a belt drive and a friction resistance system. This contrasts with the Peloton which has a magnetic resistance system. Friction resistance bikes have this little pad that puts pressure onto the flywheel, increasing and decreasing the resistance with the turn of the knob. The resistance style on this bike also serves as an emergency brake. This bike has a memory foam seat cushion which is actually a little bit larger and more padded than the Peloton. This is the height of the seat. It's supposed to rest at the top of your hip bone. The handlebars and the seat cushions can be adjusted within four inches to suit various heights. The footprint on this bike is 20.5 inches by 33.5 inches or approximately 1.7 feet by 3.5 feet. This contrasts with the Peloton which has a footprint of two feet by four feet. This bike weighs 77 pounds and has a maximum recommended weight of 264 pounds. The flywheel is in the front, same as the Peloton. So these are what the pedals look like. As mentioned, they do have toe cages, meaning that you don't need to wear separate spin shoes. So this is what the packaging of the bike looks like when it arrived in the mail today. It was quite heavy, but I was able to push it inside. So this is what the bike looks like with all the packaging removed. As you can see, here is the instruction manual. So here's all the various bike components. So let's go ahead and see how long assembly takes. We'll start with the instruction manual. Here is a list of all the parts. So we're first gonna start with the assembly of the foot pipes. So now I'm just gonna walk you briefly through the process. All of these pieces are for the foot pipes right here. There's one in the front and one in the back. To install the foot pipes, you just insert the large carriage screw, place a curved washer over that, and secure it with an acorn nut. After installing those two foot pipes, we move on to the pedals, which are designated with a left and right sticker. And the last step is to install the handlebar. Altogether, the process of setting up the bike took a little under an hour. I will say that the instructions are well written in English, and they do have a full assembly video on their Amazon product page if you'd like to see the entire process. So it's currently 8.40 in the morning and just about to do a workout. So my plan is to stream one of the Peloton cycling classes and cast it onto the TV. So today let's just do a 20 minute 2000s ride with Alex Toussaint. And here's the button to cast it via Chromecast. 25 minutes worth of assistance. So one thing I want to mention right off the bat is that if you're following along with the spin or cycling class like I am with the Peloton class right now, when the instructor calls out different resistance levels, this bike doesn't have a way of telling you what resistance you're at. You kind of just have to estimate based on the feel. So this is what the display looks like and they don't have an area for resistance which I am a bit surprised. So every time when you adjust the resistance with this dial, there's no way of actually knowing what resistance you're at making it a little bit hard to follow along with spin classes. Also, anytime that the instructor goes out of the saddle or standing up while pedaling, this bike isn't the most sturdy when you do that. It was kind of shaking a little bit, so it's definitely not like the Peloton that I'm used to. I think these definitely need to be tightened up. But I think if you mostly use this bike for like sitting down portions or more casual rides, I think this would suit the bill. So this is a little felt piece that puts pressure on the flywheel, increasing or decreasing the resistance. I will say with use that this felt piece kind of isn't perfectly aligned with the flywheel. As you can see, it's a little bit offset. The flywheel itself is made of a coated metal material.
And these two portions, unfortunately, are plastic. The rest of it, as I mentioned before, is like this welded steel. So this is how loud the bike sounds. As you can see, there is a little bit of a wobble and you definitely can hear the flywheel sound. So as mentioned, there are two ports. There's a green port, which the flat portion goes into, and there's also the red port, which this portion goes into. So you wanna make sure that they're properly aligned in order to get an accurate reading. And here is the included cable cover. This spin bike doesn't have any self-leveling feet. The only leveling portions would be like these um, yellow pieces on the end. So there's no way of really like balancing it out. If you want a more stable ride, I might recommend putting an equipment mat underneath the bike. In all honesty, I'm not that impressed with this bike. It's decent enough for its price and you're definitely able to work up a sweat with this bike. I would recommend that you mostly use it for like sitting down portions. Don't try to go out of the saddle too much with this bike as it doesn't feel the most stable. So I will admit, I was a bit wary on this bike solely based on the price alone. This bike is definitely on the more affordable spectrum. Right off the bat, you wanna make sure that the base portion is tightly screwed on or else your bike will wobble during your ride. Also, since this bike is friction resistance, it's not as silent as a magnetic resistance bike, which I'm used to with the Peloton. Adjusting the handlebars and the seat takes a little bit of force. It's not as smooth as other bikes that I have tried. With that point in mind, it may be a bit cumbersome adjusting the bike every time before a ride, especially if you're sharing it with other people in your household. Since this bike has toe cages on the pedals, you don't need to purchase a separate pair of spin shoes, which can be a benefit, especially for those that don't want to invest additional money. I will say that the yellow monitor portion displaying the time, distance, calories burned, etc., is a bit difficult to read. And you also wanna make sure that the cables are plugged into the right hole on the back. There are two ports, a red and a green port. I do like that the seat is well cushioned. It's thicker than other spin bikes I've tried and it is wider. In conclusion, I 100% believe that you get what you pay for. It's a decent bike and you can definitely break a sweat with this. I like that it's not too heavy and it's quite easy to maneuver around, especially with the two wheels on the front. Once again, this bike does weigh 77 pounds, so it's not deal breakingly heavy, say if you have to move it to a second story or move it further throughout your house. Compared to my Peloton, there is no comparison. However, this bike is 14% the price of the Peloton and there is no monthly charge required to maintain classes as of course, this bike doesn't have their own app with classes. If you don't wanna pay a monthly membership for an app containing spin classes, there are quite a few free options on YouTube. I would just recommend that you search free spin class. I would possibly recommend this product if you're not a huge bike fan or if you just wanna test it out and see if you're even interested in it or if you just wanna break a sweat and don't care about having any additional extra features. Continuing the theme of this video with affordable alternatives, here we have a body temperature monitor fitness tracker. This product retails at a shocking price of $32. So in all honesty, I didn't have high expectations for this product solely based on its price. So as mentioned, this retails for $32.99, but if you are a first time user, you can purchase it for $20. So this is what the inner packaging looks like. And here we have the user guide, and this is the product itself. So looks wise, it kind of resembles a Fitbit. To charge it, it is a little bit clunky because you have to physically remove the strap portion and use quite a bit of force. And this is the piece that you would be charging via USB. So this is the piece that you insert to a USB port to charge it. So I know this looks kind of weird, but yeah, you just literally put this in the USB port. So here are some examples of what it can track. It can track your, your steps, your distance, your body temperature, blood pressure, ECG. So if you're looking for an Apple Watch dupe, this definitely is not it. And to be quite honest, I don't think it's worth the money because it's really difficult to use and not that convenient. With that being said, that should do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're not already, and comment down below what are your thoughts on this bike. Would you rather pay a little bit more for a more heavy duty bike, or do you like this more affordable, somewhat introductory price range? With that being said, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.